So hello everybody, you're very welcome back to Law Hero. My name is Jen and make videos about the law and other things. And today we're going to talk about something which has been uh, prevalent in society, which is action faking. Now, this is something that has arisen from the hustle or productivity culture. And it's kind of like all those things you see on Instagram, those reels of people being like, invest in yourself, today's gonna to be your most productive year and all these tantalizing images of, you know, like really satisfying, like people reading books or people organizing their um, cosmetics in their bathroom, that kind of a thing, that's what I'm alluding to. And I do it myself, uh, I film myself working, but I actually am working. I'm not just doing it for the gram or whatnot, I'm like, Oh, I'm going to be doing a bit of deep work now. I might as well film that for B-roll because it looks good. Someone working it kind of makes other people go, huh, someone else is working. Maybe I should work. So, yeah, um, that's what we're going to talk about today. Stay tuned for some um, rant. I suppose the first thing we're going to talk about is the modern day productivity paradox and what that is. So that's when we trick ourselves into believing that we're getting closer to our goals and that is true things like writing it down um writing it down like in a notebook or putting it on a sticky note i'm moving closer to my goals if you if you think for example the goal of losing weight um you're going to get a dopamine hit out of writing it down and telling people that you're in the process of losing weight but you actually haven't done anything yet that's why they say that sometimes it is better not to tell people about your goals now conversely if you have a goal say for me for example one of my goals is to win a high rocks in the open women it may be a good idea to tell people especially the people you train with because then they know what your intention is and then you almost have like accountability in trying to reach that goal so it's paradoxical i would say if it's a goal that's personal to you like something like losing weight maybe keep it to yourself or if you're going to the gym for example or bringing someone in on the journey accountability that may help um but what I'm more talking about is the spinning the wheels. For example, buying like a productivity app or instead of completing tasks, spending hours on motivational videos um, without applying any of those lessons. Now, I'm going to definitely throw it back to 2017, 2018 was I, when I was in my like motivational video binge and i used to buy every single book i could get my hands on um anything to do with motivation anything to do with productivity i would buy it and that would tick the box in my head that i was a productive person of course i was doing nothing i wasn't applying any of the tasks and like it is that phrase ideas without execution is delusion and that's what i was doing um it's also prevalent for example in the sports world so um Again, to give you an example of high rocks, you can watch a high rocks on YouTube and you can almost feel the dopamine rush that those athletes get vicariously through the television without ever getting up off your arse. Like it's unreal what social media allows us to feel. It allows us to, the, because the brain doesn't know. The brain sees an image and it interprets it as doing it. They have they've done studies that have shown that Olympic athletes who run the race in their mind um, experience the same twitches, experience the same motion impulses and nerve impulses they would have done were they in a race. Their heart starts beating everything. It's crazy. The brain is blind. It's The brain can only go off what you perceive, which is amazing. And that's why you can experience the dopamine of doing something whilst never doing it um i see this with iron man I see people watching iron man videos and they're like yeah i'm watching iron man videos and they're like oh, won't bother going out for that cycle i'm talking to myself here so it is crazy uh, it's a psychological maze it is rooted in our brain's preference preference for immediate gratification over long-term 
uh, rewards and like that's what we are all trying to do we'd rather get the plastic surgery than do the workout we'd rather have the donut than have the celery we'd we'd rather do the instant gratification piece than suffer because we are fundamentally wired to prefer pain over pleasure duh pleasure feels good pain doesn't um but this preference leads us to choose tasks that offer quick false feelings of achievement and understanding the cognitive bias at play including the dunning-kruger effect which i'll talk about in a second and the planning fallacy can illuminate why we overestimate our progress and how to recalibrate our actions for true growth the brain loves shortcuts and the reason is because the brain needs to conserve energy so i'll give you an example if you were society society runs on trust if you were to question every single action thing that happens around you um if you were to question every single driver on the roads uh, ability to drive um people who are in the government people who are in the police um people who are in the shop i don't know anyone if you were to question everyone's ability you would go crazy you would be all the time feeling this unease because you cannot just take things at face value Taking things at face value is a shortcut that we all do. For example, you see someone with blonde hair and you go, oh, they must be an idiot. Or you see somebody um, in a wheelchair and go, oh, their life must be awful. Um, It's a shortcut that makes us conserve energy. Therefore, when it comes to goals and aspirations and productivity, we're we're hardwired to make a shortcut because that conserves us energy. Human beings want to conserve energy. That's why it's so difficult to get out of bed in the morning. That's why it's so difficult to do anything difficult because we're not hardwired to do that. The Dunning-Kruger effect is when you don't know what you don't know and you never know you're suffering from the Dunning-Kruger effect because you don't know what you don't know. So uh, if you ever read the book about it, it says you don't know you're in the Dunning-Kruger club until somebody says it to you. And um, yeah, it's quite interesting. So what it means is that you have no idea about the fundamentals of how the human brain works because you're only on the periphery of your knowledge. And on the periphery of the knowledge, it says that buy the productivity um, apps, look at the productivity hacks because that's a low barrier to entry. That's what anybody can do. Anybody can download an app on their phone. Um, Anybody can watch YouTube videos. But what's really difficult is putting those things into action. But you don't know that until you know that. So obviously by virtue of watching this video today, you know that. Okay, so the next point then is that the consequences of action faking are um, in society. So the repercussions of action faking extend far beyond wasted time. Um, It's a cycle that diminishes self-esteem, clouds our judgment and hampers our ability to achieve meaningful success. Over time, the cycle can lead to burnout and disillusionment, making it harder to distinguish between mere activity and genuine productivity. And I definitely have um suffered from this myself and it's because of this busyness mentality that a lot of us grow up with um we're used to seeing parents being very busy we're used to seeing mentors being very busy constantly moving action 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 and it's like where is the value in that action where is the productivity what is the product of that action or are they merely doing action for action's sake and being able to call that out for what it is. Okay, so let's just break that down a little bit. So the reason your self-esteem gets diminished by um, the dopamine hits is because you don't have confidence that you can do the difficult things. So confidence comes from doing things that are outside your comfort zone in your stretch zone and repeating that cycle over and over again so that your brain starts to realize oh i've done a hard thing before i can do it again and that's how you build self-esteem it's belief in your ability to execute time and time again and people with low self-esteem usually they don't push themselves because they don't believe they can achieve so that's the first one then the second one is judgment so Judgment comes from being able to identify patterns. And if your judgment when it comes to action faking is that, 
okay, well, I've done something. So how could I be right? I've done something. I've downloaded the app. I've made a plan. Then how come I'm not successful? Then you start to doubt your own like cognitive ability. You're like, okay, well, I did what I was supposed to do, but it's that Dunning-Kruger effect. You don't know what you don't know. Judgment only comes from taking in all the information available, distilling it down and making the best decision with what you have. That's good judgment. Um, and then, of course, the meaningful success. If something's meaningful, it's not hollow, it's not surface, it has a deep meaning to us, and also it changes us as human beings. Remember what I said earlier about developing self esteem and confidence that only comes from knowing or believing or hoping that we can do something, but kind of having an inkling that we can because we've done it before. Okay, so next, how do we actually see it for what it is in our own life? And I mean, I'm just looking out the window right now and the amount of people on phones filming themselves walking is incredible. We've really got to that stage in life, but how can you, um, I guess, how can you call it out for what it is? So I would say that unfortunately you're going to have to be brutally honest with yourself and I've had to do this myself. I've had to like look at my day and go, oh my God, I'm spending two hours on the phone looking at other people working out rather than like and then I'm too tired to go to the gym I'm like "Uh uh-huh well there was two hours on the phone looking at people in the gym so that's why I didn't get to go to the gym and I'd be brutally honest with myself and go that was lazy that was taking the shortcut and I knew it I knew it that's why they say do a dopamine detox of course the second one is to like be ultra self-aware of like your tendencies so for example I have a tendency to binge watch productivity reels on Instagram. I'm talking about the ones that like someone's organizing all their pens in their drawer or they're cleaning out their makeup. I will watch that. I'm like, oh, that to me is like ecstasy because I love organizing. It comes from a psychological need for control. But like what I love more than organizing is watching other people organize. It's sick, but at least I know that about myself. And it's actually what caused me to buy lots of organizing accoutrements. The strategy is, I would say, taking a step back and going, what am I actually doing here? What is the point of this? Who is this helping? Who is this serving? Is this bullshit? Am I action faking? Am I just watching this YouTube video about Iron Man 70.3 Calmar or whatever because I actually don't want to cycle. I actually don't want to leave the house. Am I clearing out the sock drawer for the fifth time because I'm avoiding sitting down, writing that report, etc, etc. Call it out. It's really, really hard to focus nowadays because of all the distractions. I've said this before, what I simply do is put the phone out of the room. I don't trust myself, so I put the phone out of the room. I tell people not to come into the room, I'm like, don't come in. I disable all notifications on the computer. Anything that flashes up, I'll be like, hmm, but like a little squirrel. I'm like, no, I can't, I can't. No distractions. It's just, it just has to be zero distractions for me. Whatever works for you. Uh, okay, well, I hope you enjoyed that little journey rabbit hole down the productivity um side of things being um real boring is how you get things done so yeah i'll leave you with that thank you very much for watching i love making these videos and i'll see you in the next one